Hello everyone, Kyle Bunger here. Today I have decided that it is time to give my impressions of Fraymakers, uh, mainly just because it's long overdue. I've been trying to do a lot of different things and really, you know, get an understanding of this game before I give my impressions. Uh, and now I think I'm ready to do it. I don't have a script. But I'm going to do this very similarly to the video that I did on multiverses when they, they were in their closed beta. I'm going to try my best to just articulate my feelings about everything in this game. And while we do that, we're going to have some gameplay in the background. So yeah, this should be fun. So I guess first place we always start uh, with any game when you're giving your impressions is the gameplay. Because that is the most important thing about any game. And let me tell you guys, I think this game is extremely fun. The base game is extremely solid. It's just really fast. Uh, you know, definitely on the side of, um, you know, favoring offense more than defense. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later, how that's a positive and a negative. But um, overall, the positive of that is that... Um, the game is really fun and it's really easy to just come in here, do a bunch of combos and uh, get out. Um, in terms of specific characters, uh, Octodad is my favorite one to play. That's why I'm playing as him right now. Octodad is like one of the coolest like tipper characters in any of these platform fighting games that I've played. Uh, all of his tippers are at the edges of his tentacles and... Um, if you're not hitting a tipper, it's okay because that usually means you can get like a combo off into a tipper. And uh, on top of that, he's just got a lot of wacky moves like that. Octospin. Um, he's got another Octospin, but this time this one has armor on it because that's funny. <laughs> um, he's also got uh, two command grabs. He gives me Luffy vibes in that way, but... I would say his command grabs are definitely a bit more situational. You do both of them at the same time, just like that. So yeah, he's really cool. Um, the way his tippers like um, make him feel different compared to the rest of the cast is, is something that I gravitate towards for sure. And then there's assists. And you can do silly stuff like that. <laughs> um, assists are really awesome though. Um... I don't think I can get into every specific assist in this game, but just know that most of these assists really do add a lot to this game. There are definitely some that are better than others. I guess I could take, for example, Pizza for the longest time was like by far the best assist in the game. I don't think they are anymore though. Um, Silence really powerful. Tank Man is really powerful with Octodad mainly because Octodad sends in the angle that this thing shoots at, so he's really good. Krag is a really good utility one. Uh, Diogenes is pretty powerful, so I'd say they made like a you know a balance patch for the assists, and they're in a better place now, but uh, they still kind of need some work. Let's go back to talking about characters let's talk about commander video next i think that commander video since they are probably the first one to be made for this game uh, i would say that commander video is probably uh, the character that they really should focus the tire balance around this game with like i don't think uh commander video needs any changes at all i don't think really octodad needs any either he he plays perfect the way he is right now Commander Video, I feel the same way. He's just like this very good all-around, but also like rush down -y type of character. Uh, I really like playing as him a lot. Uh, he's got plenty of moves that send like outwards, but you got to be careful about, uh, you know, edge guarding with this character. Main thing you're going to want to do with him is try and connect slides with him. So for example, you do that. You can jump out of your slides and then do some crazy stuff from there, like that. 
And yeah, his slide brings him a lot of utility. This is supposed to reflect things. Doesn't really do that very well right now. Just because there's not many projectiles in the game. And that's definitely uh, something I'm surprised about. Is just the fact that, you know, you gave a character a reflector. But then there's not many projectiles. I know for sure that they're probably planning on adding a projectile character in the future. There's no way there's not. So, I mean, there's so many indie characters that could fix the uh, zoner archetype. So, there's no way they're not going to get at least one for this game. But still. Uh, yeah. Commander video is just super duper solid in design. He's not like super powerful or anything. But he can get the job done. He can still be, he still, he still has some sauce. And that's, that's the fun thing. Let's see. Now if you use something like uh, an assist where they, you know, they get popped up. Oh, I was just about to show it, but one combo you can do with Commander Video is like birthday into his up B and his up B will kill. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> kind of crazy uh let's move on to weltaro weltaro is a crazy 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 character design weltaro basically wants to be above people um he wants to be able to uh you know pop them up into the air so he can do stuff to them from there all of his aerials are probably the most powerful in the game um i think to a fault <laughs> because uh, for example, his forward air here, um, there's just so many hitboxes on this thing that spike people. It's kind of crazy. Like, the very top of this move can spike people. The only place that doesn't really spike is, like, behind him. But it, like, you know, it covers his whole body like that, and it's it's just crazy. <laughs> so, Wotaro, uh, on top of that, he has this neutral air, which is extremely hard to contest. It's also extremely hard to shield it. It's a multi-hit going around his whole body. Um, and it can hit people from behind as, you know, like he can literally just jump on top of you while you're shielding do this. And there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, again, we'll, we'll get into like specific offense, defense type of stuff later. Just want to go over the characters. but And I think that overall, well, Taro is really powerful. He's really silly right now. Uh, I think he needs just the Nair and his forward air toned down a bit. I think other than that, he's probably just fine, you know. Because, you know, he, he would still be really powerful. Even with those things nerfed. And it's okay for characters to be, uh, to be powerful in this game. I think I want them to feel powerful overall. Then finally, we, ha we have Orcane. Or Kane coming from Rivals of Aether. Um, he doesn't play exactly like he does in Rivals of Aether for sure. Like one of the biggest things about him is I feel like his bubbles are worse or they don't spread out as much. Definitely his uh, his forward air feels a lot worse in this game than in Rivals of Aether. Like in Rivals of Aether you can go flying with his forward air. You can't do that in this game. But I guess to make up for it, uh, he's got... A really powerful set of moves that just all combo into each other. So, uh, yeah, he's got his down tilt, which then could go into his up tilt, which then could go into his nair, and then he can just keep on doing nairs over and over again. So, yeah, he's he's really dang good in those regards. Also, his down air just, like, combos into itself again, goes right through shields. It's not the funnest thing in the world to deal with honestly this down air so if i were to give a suggestion about orcane it would definitely just be again it's okay for all of his like normals to link into each other that's fun and that's cool and i like that this down air needs something or the, even just the defense in this game needs something because i think uh you guys are starting to see a trend where multi-hits are just really powerful in this game because, you know, like, the, the premise of Frame Makers is in their one-sided shields, as you can see here. So one-sided shield doesn't break, uh, doesn't have, like, any, like, shield stun either when you get hit. There's no pushback from uh, somebody hitting your shield. So 
that allows for like easy punishes when people do hit your shield but um it's still weird because <laughs> like with this shield for example it's not covering much of orcane's body so if you do come down with like and a down air or something on top of somebody as you can see like as i'm doing the down air i can just like go to the other side of somebody's body and then i'll be able to hit them that way so like in practice for the most part the one-sided shields are actually okay um the only problem is like multi-hits you know like if you go into somebody and hit their shield with a you know one hit move then it's fine but uh, multi-hits just completely break how the shield system works, in my opinion. And it's not like you're not going to have multi-hits in a, in, in a game like this. You're just you're going to have to. And you shouldn't make it so that when you do a multi-hit move, it just stalls all your air momentum or something. That wouldn't be fun either. So I would just say probably the best thing to do is just try and either rework the shields so that you can like uh turn with them like i would say that's the bare minimum thing that would that would really help them out and that's something that they've talked about too thinking about doing like uh we'll certainly see if our testers think it's better um for shields to be able to be like turned around with um and, and yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say about the defense other than like, you know, it's just classic platform fighting game stuff where when you're in neutral, you just have to space and do your best to do that uh, until you start going into dis or advantage, I should say. Once you're in advantage, then you just start hitting people with combos and all that crazy stuff. Some people's combos are way better than others right now. <laughs> Some of their advantages are, are way better than others, so. Um, and then when you're on defense, it just, it feels super weird. Because parries, uh, I don't know what frame they come out, but they don't last very long at all. They don't, like, stun your opponent like they do in Rivals of Aether. So that is certainly something. And then... Um, on top of that, they're just they're just harder to hit in like something like Rivals of Aether 2. So it's just it's interesting. Like some people have had discourse about how like defensive options in this game are actually just fine, you know? Because it requires you to space and stuff and you know, like I would kind of agree with that in a way. If, you know, some other systems kind of just worked with these shields it's like the the defense in this game it's almost there but offense is definitely winning out by a lot it feels like you can kind of throw some stuff out right now and it's very hard to deal with uh it doesn't feel like uh that defense um is as rewarded as offense and that you know like in a platform fighting game you definitely want to have a balance and it does not feel like the balance is quite there for this game. It's almost there. I don't know. I can't tell you what exactly needs to be fixed. There's already been feedback. Like, there's already been feedback given about how it could potentially be fixed. Uh, that I think the devs have gotten anyway, so... Yeah. They say, for me, it's very hard to, to talk about the gameplay too, just because I've not been able to play online without my computer like lagging like crazy. You, you can see here, there's occasional stuttering, but for the most part, this game is running just fine for me when I'm playing it offline. But for some reason, I go online, and now we can even see our pings. Before, we couldn't see our pings, they just add an update where we can. And like I just played against somebody and my ping, our, our connection was great. Like we were in the 50 millisecond range pretty consistently. And yet we were lagging like it was, you know, 200 milliseconds, you know, delay or something like that. 
So I guess that's one thing I need to talk about too, is just the online in general. I've heard a lot of complaints about online where the rollback for a lot of people feels a lot worse than the uh, delay-based netcode option. And a lot of people are opting to play with Parsec. Um, that's another way in which you can have like delay-based netcode. So right now, uh, rollback's in a really rough state, and I think that's probably one of the main reasons why this game is not going to be coming out for a while. For you guys, having decent rollback netcode is very important to a game. And I've said, like in the McLeod Gaming Discord server, that what's probably going to be best for this game is if, you know, the rollback is comparable to like Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Like the way it is right now. Not the way it used to be, but the way it is right now, where connections are pretty decent. And, you know, if there's any like disruptions, it's kind of like jittering more than like slowing down type of thing. I'd, I'd take that more than anything else. And I think that's the state that this game needs to be in, in order for it to, to give you guys a good first impression when you come and play it type of thing. Because uh, let me tell you one thing for sure, you don't want to be fighting against these CPUs. This dude's at level 9. He's just like a sandbag right now. <laughs> these CPUs are horrible. I know they're going to fix them. So I can't be too like harsh about that. And I know programming AI, especially AI... Um, for like platform fighting games is probably really dang hard so i can't you know i can't blame anybody <laughs> for you know because this is also mcleod gaming's first experience trying to like implement rollback netcode it seems like a huge process seems like a something that's going to take a while no matter what so uh they they are going to have to take their time on that and i think um you know, it's just going to be for the best that the game's delayed for it. Uh, I would say the only other reason why this game uh, should be delayed is just because there's plenty of, like, unfinished uh, animations between, like, Octodad here and even Orcane a bit. They're starting to fill them in more, which is good. But, um, yeah, overall, there's also, there's supposed to be, like, more more assists in early access and we haven't gotten any of those new assists yet like we haven't had any announcements on them or we just haven't had them added into the game and we don't know if these new assists like they're, they're supposed to be four more we don't know if they're supposed to be like brand new ones that nobody's ever seen before or ones that uh, have already been announced i have a feeling they're going to add some that have already been announced uh no matter what that's probably going to be for the best. Like, you can see here, there's plenty of unannounced ones, or announced ones that are locked right now. They'll probably add, like, two of these in, but apparently, again, there's definitely supposed to be a couple that haven't been announced at all being added eventually. This tester build's been out for, like, what, a month now, and none of them have been added? So that's, that's definitely worrisome, <laughs> to say the very least. And uh, I, I don't know exactly, uh, I think they're trying to worry about a lot of other things right now before they worry about content for the game. So uh, yeah, let's, you know, we've talked about the characters, we've talked about assists, we've talked about online being a little tricky. Um, oh my, <laughs> here's a bug right here. If you exit out of stuff, it just uh, stays here. This is essentially a soft lock. Again, there's plenty of bugs that they need to uh, fix right now. <laughs> Let me see if I can't get this back up for ya. Alright, we're back. Anyway, one of the things I want to talk about here is I want to talk about the uh, training mode. This is not like a training mode yet. <laughs> this training mode is just, you can hit around a level 0 CPU and that's it. So, yeah. <laughs> that being said, since there's nothing much going on there, I can't really judge it on that. I hear that there's going to be, you know, eventually options to uh, view hitboxes in training mode and, you know, a bunch of other stuff, probably. You can talk about the stages next. The stages in this game look amazing. And in some way, shape, or form, most of them are competitively viable 
But, you know, this is something I don't do very often, but there's also hazards versions of these stages. I haven't, like, played on these at all. Hazard versions of stages are pretty dang interesting. Um, <laughs> this is just, like, the stage you play if you want to be in the air 24-7. It's really funny. And then with uh, the Spire, you go into there, there are two platforms at the bottom of the stage that you can uh, play on. So that leads to a lot of funny stuff too, honestly. I've seen people shoot this laser through the stage. That can apparently happen. Yeah. <laughs> There's some like collision issues and all that good stuff going on right now. And, um, you know, that could actually lead very well into a discussion about free tools. Let me go ahead and say screw it. <laughs> Let's give you guys a treat. Um, so free tools... Let me tell you guys right now my feelings on Frey Tools. Frey Tools um, is certainly a lot easier probably than going in and just trying to mod any singular game on its own, right? Like you have to have some extensive coding knowledge in order to mod a game. With that being said, um, this game it's it's really dang hard <laughs> to uh, to mod stuff for this game if I had to be honest. And one of the big reasons for that right now is because a lot of things in Frey Tools, the application itself, just aren't working super duper well. <laughs> um, I guess my biggest example would be like for me on Mac for some reason, like the the color uh, map editor is just not updating. And sure enough, now my color maps are all screwed up and I don't quite know um, where I need to fix things. Um, there's also, you know, all these, an issue with all these like custom characters that I've played so far, where like the camera isn't quite following them. Um, there's a lot of issues with stages right now. Um, just, just a lot of things that certainly could be, uh, touched up way more with Frey Tools. Um, I'd say the main thing about Frey Tools is that, you know, it, it marketed itself as like a, you know, beginner friendly tool. It does not feel like that for me because, you know, somebody who barely knows anything about, um, about coding, I'm just like, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> have no idea what's going on anytime I'm, I'm trying to do stuff within the game. What was that? My burst just didn't activate. Whoa! Here's the shredder side B. <laughs> oh, is this also for the... This is my first time playing this character since uh, Chubbs updated them. <laughs> but... You know, like, you, you can't just go in and expect that you're going to be able to make a character. Like, you have to have some kind of coding knowledge for sure because it, it focuses, like, a lot on, like, an API. An API is basically, like, uh, a pre, like, I guess, pre-made functions that you can use for for code. Um yeah, I don't know how to describe it because I'm only uh, I'm only just like starting to begin how to code stuff. So yeah, <laughs> but the API right now um, it's the descriptions for all the different uh, lines of code are unfinished. So um, you can't really unless you just guess and experiment. You're not going to be able to know exactly. Uh, what you need to do in order to make a character and to make things happen within the game. It seems like there's just in general a lot of instances where um, things just aren't working for people, you know, for, for whatever reason uh, during exporting or whatever. So 
it's just it's interesting for sure um again as somebody who's who's not like a huge like coding nerd i can't i can't tell you exactly what's wrong with freight tools but i can say for sure you need at least some kind of intermediate knowledge to understand what's going on there and uh I wouldn't say that's for that's the best thing ever because again it's it's marketed around you know anybody being able to use tools and um it's it's not the case right now it's in a rough spot um but still there's a lot of convenience things in there like being able to do auto hurt boxes and auto keyframes being able to just stick like hit boxes um, as boxes instead of like, you know, programming it in, <laughs> like putting number values on them until something looks right. But even still, like not everything is as convenient as like the hurt box system that they have going. For example, like, let me show, let me show off sands, right? I'm trying to make sands and I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, first of all, here's how the color map's just messed up. I don't even think it's... Yeah, here we go. Now it's changing between different colors. Uh, let's use this one. This one's supposed to be Grillby, right? And you're going to see how weird he looks. But for these different, like, menu things, right? I it, It's, like, not clear where I need to put my stuff in order for them to fit within these little HUD and menu icons. Um, it was pretty clear to to put like where to put the actual assist my god look at that sans oh he's terrifying looking his color maps all wrong and uh yeah i really don't know what's wrong with that at all it seems like you can't have too many colors on a color map like if you do then like free tools gets confused and it's just not able to uh to, to do a color map that has like similar colors um, within it and I, I think that's just like yeah a huge a huge blow <laughs> right yeah you, you can see that this is about as I I couldn't even have gotten this far with my assist without help from people in my streams you know so, um, I, I, I would just recommend that you guys learn, like, JavaScript or, like, C++, anything like that before you, uh, try and get into free tools or anything. Um, it's rough right now. It's rough to try and learn how to make a character. We, the only thing we have are templates that kind of just give us an idea of some of the things that you can do. Um, once a character template is out, it might become a, much more clear actually how to make like different things for an assist. <laughs> but yeah, for now, it's just it's just really confusing to know what exactly you need to do within code uh, in order to make things work within this game. Because again, all the like preset variables and other things that you have to use aren't explained within the API document. Um, without that documentation, it's in like without like a tutorial telling us what things do. It's just really hard to uh, to code things unless you've already had a lot of coding experience. So yeah, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. Overall, the controls for this game for a really long time were pretty rough. Now they feel pretty decent. Um, you can set all kinds of different buttons, which is nice. Good for accessibility. Um, you can set tap jump and auto dash, uh, basically all the options that Smash Brothers has. And then, um, on top of that for controller support, um, you can set your dead zones, you can set your radius, which will help you, you know, for example, if you're finding it hard to like dash, you can decrease this. There's also dead zones for your triggers. So even if I just press this just a little bit, it'll still register that I'm hitting my trigger. So that's nice. Yeah, I think a lot of people though are still having problems with controller support. Right now I'm using a 
PlayStation 4 controller, I've had people say that they've had problems with Xbox controllers and GameCube controllers especially. So just when this game comes out and, you know, it's it's possible that those things still won't be fixed. So just keep that in mind. But overall, controls feel really nice for this game. One thing I will say just about overall gameplay again is that um, like some things that I don't like about gameplay and control in general are like wave dashes. Like they aren't terrible in this game, but I don't know. Like it's they they don't feel terribly good to do either. And for some reason they're just like I don't know, they're like hard for me to do. Like sometimes they're just not coming out, even though I'm kind of doing the same motion over and over again. Yeah, here's Perry there. <laughs> Perry, they like say it probably comes out as soon as that white flash is there, and that's that's it. That white flash is all the time that parries out. Don't like that too much. Then, of course, there's like air dashes in general, and then air dash aerials. Uh, to me, I personally feel like coming down with an air dash aerial, uh, for how much lag you get, it feels really bad. <laughs> That's, I know a lot of people have said, you know, you can't just, you know, do air dash aerials for free, right? But like, oh my goodness, they put you into free fall. Air Dash just put you into free fall. And then if you try and attack with them, uh, you have this huge ending lag too. So I don't know. I don't like that too much. I, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be landing lag after an Air Dash aerial. But there's just so much here. It feels really like bad to the flow of the game. Because again, like... Uh, you want to be going fast in this game. And you also, I mean, for something like Air Dash Aerials, I'm sure they want to try and encourage people to do it. I don't really feel too, too encouraged to do it outside of some very select scenarios where I'm like, I feel like really confident that I'm going to be able to hit this Air Dash Aerial. Otherwise, I just don't care to ever use Air Dashing in this game. And since everybody's like, Everybody's initial dash just goes so far. Like, let me show you what Commander Videos does. Commander Videos initial dash is like a long jump. It uh, it like goes halfway across the screen. So this is just me flicking my stick. That's how far he goes just by flicking the stick. And uh, you can't stop yourself by crouching and stuff. Um, it's still very jarring. And again, well, I don't know why I'd want to use an air dash or a wave dash, I should say. If I can just do an initial dash, stop, you know, wherever I want, and it's so fast. Like, ground movement in this game is a little crazy. <laughs> um, like, this is just for micro spacing overall, but it's still, like, I don't know. <laughs> the movement in this game like, for the most part, it feels fine, but again, there's just some really weird stuff, like this initial dash stuff that really doesn't feel good. Like, I could see wave dashing just being good just so that you can move a short distance without this happening. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe that's just me. And speaking of, too, you can't, like, you can't do air dashes in the specials, either. I think that could be fun. But I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that would be balanced at the end of the day. I'm trying to go in depth and I feel like I have talked about just about everything I've wanted to talk about. I guess my basic summary here would just be that Frame Makers is really fun. The core gameplay is pretty much just about perfect. There only really needs to be adjustments to like well, Taro and Orcane in terms of balance. Which is good news for them, I'm sure, because they've said they don't really want to do balance patches too often. And I also think that, you know, the costs of some of these assists could be changed. They've already done that once. I'm sure they could do it some more. I don't think that function-wise any of these are bad now. Like, pizza used to stay out for like 10 seconds, and that was kind of crazy. But now I think all of these are okay. 
Um, I don't know if I'd necessarily want these assists to be more powerful because right now the main things they kind of do is just, you know, give you stage control or they let you do a combo or they finish off combos. You know, I'd say that's probably good enough because, again, the, the core gameplay of this game is so fun. You don't want, like, assists being, like, the main driving point. Um, you want everything to kind of come together in a way. So, yeah, that's why I kind of feel like, you know, characters and assists, they come together pretty well. Um, there's, like, you know, specific character assists combinations that are better than others, and that's really cool. Like, Orcane can be really good with somebody like a Krag, mainly because a lot of his moves kill upwards. But I think somebody like maybe, uh, I don't know. I don't know who couldn't take advantage of Krag, honestly. <laughs> I would say that, um, yeah, a lot of these assists, whether you use them or not, will just depend on what your strategy is to, to finish off people or get damage on them so that you can finish them off later. So that's really cool. Stages, they're normal, they're nice. The music in this game is awesome. That's one thing I forgot to say. The music in this game is absolutely amazing. But yeah, stages are, you know, competitive or kind of silly, like Stratostar over here with hazards on. So that's good. There's still going to be a lot of things added to this game. So again, like, it's kind of unfair to, for me to kind of even give my impressions on a game that's basically, like, unfinished, <laughs> right? Um, this game's not going to be finished for a long time, but... I still encourage you guys to give it a shot when it does go on early access. I'm sure that it's going to be in a pretty decent state by then. Um, the presentation of the stages are great. Character sprites are beautiful. The UI is meh. They're going to change that. They said they made it last minute. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what else I could say. I, you know, I really don't have any real actual like super duper negatives on this game right now um besides rollback netcode uh everything else seems to just be working pretty dang well and i i really love playing this game honestly my favorite platform fighters are starting to become like slap city and and frame makers at this point and it's a shame that i can't play frame makers without you know, my internet going crazy. Hopefully when I get my Steam Deck, uh, things will get a lot better. And that, you know, it, it's going to be coming within the next, like, two weeks or so. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Because um, I feel like, again, this might be a Mac problem. But, like, when I'm playing online with a Mac, it's just, it's going nuts. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and uh, when I'm using free tools with a Mac, you know, it feels like some things are more... Or more broken than they are for other people so yeah it there's still a lot of work to be done and it's hard to judge what exactly needs to be changed right now i feel like the game is just too incomplete to judge and the metas you know not complete enough to say if there necessarily needs to be any huge balance changes yeah they just gotta fix some things up add some more content and hopefully it will be out to you guys and we'll all be playing foray together uh yeah i i think that's literally it i'll see you guys on the next video bye